good morning dear students welcome to the today's session today i am going to start with the subject history in that we will start with the new lesson number 7 the administration of the swaraj on page number 29 of your textbook okay so be ready with your page number 29 of the textbook history subject fine let us start in the last lesson if you remember we have done conflicts with the mughals yes or no what what conflicts we uh, we uh, shivaji maharaj had to faced uh, with the mughals okay there were always uh, we had conflicts with the mughals while uh, after the foundation of the swaraj right now in this lesson we will study how the uh, administration of the swaraj was there now what do you mean by administration first administration means the process of running uh, any organization or a business so how was the swaraj uh, you know how uh, that swaraj was run what management was there and so administration means the running smoothly of the swaraj fine let us read the shivaji maharaj founded swaraj yes we all know he had himself crowned right we have studied in the last lesson that he himself crowned so that there would be an identification recognition given to the swaraj after the coronation maharaj accomplished dakshin digvijay the conquest of the south that means after the coronation what happened dakshin digvijay was accomplished means with all accomplished means with high you know with all the skills uh, in a skillful way achieve something uh, a particular activity or anything so that way in a skillful way maharaj uh, you know try to conquest the south that is dakshin digvijay the swaraj expanded comprising large areas of nasik pune satara sangli kolhapur sindhudurg ratnagiri raigad and thane districts of maharashtra so now the work of swaraj was expanding as we all know so this work was expanded to the large areas okay which areas were comprised which areas came under this swaraj they, so all these areas which i read these are all of maharashtra fine it also included parts andhra pradesh and tamil nadu states also the other two states were tamil nadu and andhra pradesh to ensure the smooth management of the affairs of the swaraj and to ensure people's welfare shivaji maharaj set up an efficient administration now what happened as we wanted to swara as we wanted that the swaraj should uh, you know all the management or all the affairs whatever dealings are happening in the swaraj that should happen in a smooth way the management should be in the smooth manner and everything should be dealt in a very smooth way so for to ensure this and uh, to ensure that the people should progress for the upliftment of the people for the welfare of the people shivaji maharaj set up an efficient administration so for that he had put up an efficient uh, an efficient means what capable <coughs> excuse <coughs> a very skillful capable in all the ways okay <coughs> so sorry <coughs> so the how how that administration was set up a skillful and capable and strong which can uh, very nicely carry out smoothly carry out all the affairs of the swaraj so this way an efficient uh, administration was set up by shivaji maharaj for the welfare of the people we shall get some information about it in this chapter so let us see what actually administration was set up by shivaji maharaj in this chapter asht pradhan mandal that is council of eight ministers okay mandal means what council okay mandal in marathi madhe bolto na apan mandal okay group of people joining uh, in a place that is called as mandal so asht asht means eight how many min pradhan means ministers eight ministers uh, council was this a council of eight ministers at the time of his coronation shivaji maharaj appointed a council of eight ministers okay this appointment was done at the time of coronation the administration was divided into eight departments so how many departments were there in the administration eight departments a head was appointed for each department 
these eight heads of department constituted the ashta pradhan mandal so each department had its own head so this head each head was called as minister right and this way eight departments eight heads and that's why they were called as ashta pradhan mandal okay this department constituted ashta pradhan mandal maharaj alone had the power to appoint a minister or to remove him from his position so who had the right to appoint the minister maharaj shivaji maharaj had the right to appoint also and if that uh, person is not uh, found capable in his work okay then also had the right to remove from his position the ministers were answerable to maharaj for the administration of their respective departments so whatever work this ministers were given and they were carrying out this work they were answerable means shivaji maharaj had the right to ask them to uh, you know monitor them so that if they are not uh, carrying out their work in the way it has been told then they were they uh, they were they had their duty to answer to shivaji maharaj so this way they were given their duties in the administration sector in their respective departments so shivaji maharaj uh, understood he was the head and he was the person who had all the rights shivaji maharaj selected the council on the basis of their merit and achievements now not any person was selected as the head of the department okay this head of the department was selected on the basis of their merit okay how much he was educated what merit levels he had achieved and many other achievements which he had uh um, you know achieved on that basis selection was done <coughs> he did not give them jagirs watans or gifts or fifths they were paid handsome salaries instead yes we have done in the before chapters also that when any person was appointed in the kingdom he was given uh, you know some jagirs or watans in uh, respect of the payment yes or no but now here shivaji maharaj didn't give them uh, uh, any jagirs or watans or gifts or fees fees means also you know it is a one type of fee uh, you can say it is mainly for the estate of land okay a fee paid for the estate of land so you just remember it is also a one type of fee paid for the services rendered so here shivaji maharaj didn't give anything uh, in kind of gifts or jagirs instead he gave you know handsome salaries means enough salaries okay next topic the policy regarding agriculture now what was the policy regarding agriculture let us see in this para agriculture was the main occupation in villages we all know maharaj knew the importance of agriculture that was why he paid attention to the welfare of farmers maharaj had understood that the agriculture sector is very important for the progress and he as he knew the importance of agriculture he paid more attention towards the welfare of farmers he entrusted he entrusted the responsibility of organizing the land revenue system to his capable and experienced office bearer annaji datto okay so annaji datto uh, was the person who was uh, you know a very experienced officer and very capable also so he was given the duty he was entrusted means what given he was given the responsibility of collecting the land revenue okay uh, by shivaji maharaj he warned the officers that they should not collect more revenue than the amount that was fixed now in before days we have studied that these people who were in charge of collecting the land revenue they were collecting more land revenue than what was fixed but shivaji maharaj had made strict to his officers those who were given the duty of collecting land revenue those officers were strictly given warning by shivaji maharaj that you should not collect more land revenue than what amount was fixed means only they should collect the amount which was fixed by shivaji maharaj fine he encouraged peasants peasants means farmers to bring uncultivated land under cultivation so uh, shivaji maharaj understood the importance of agriculture so he encouraged the farmers to bring the land under cultivation also some lands which were uncultivated which were not brought under cultivation 
were uh, asked by Shivaji Maharaj to cultivate, the, he you know directed, he instructed these peasants, he encouraged them to bring under cultivation even these lands which were not cultivated before. If the crop was lost due to excessive rains or drought or if any enemy army had devastated the area of the village, remissions were, gra remissions were granted in land revenue and other, I will continue for, so what happened, uh, uh, if suppose some calamities are coming or suppose there is excessive rains uh, uh, in some years or uh, some periods there is drought, means no rain at all. If these situations are arising, then there is a lot of suffering in the agriculture sector, yes or no? The crops will not yield as proper because there is excessive rains also destroy the crops and less water also destroy the crops. So, if these cases arise and even if there is an enemy army which are attacking, devastating means destroying, devastated means for destroying the area of the villages by attacking those areas, then in such cases, Shivaji Maharaj gave them remissions. Remissions means what? You know, uh, even if uh, in such conditions, their crops are not produced, that's why they don't get proper money from their yield. So, they are uh, suffering a lot, farmers are suffering. So, the remissions are given in the land revenue, means they won't have so much burden, they will give concessions so that they can manage the land revenue and also the situation won't get more worse. Already the situation becomes worse due to this calamity and due to land revenue burden, the situation can get more worse, yes or no? So, to prevent this, remissions were given by the uh, by Shivaji Maharaj in land revenue okay, and uh, other taxes, whatever taxes they have to pay for that, the uh, remissions were given by Shivaji Maharaj in such cases. Okay. Uh, let us read now that table first and then turn your page. But we will continue this in the next session. Bye for now. Take care. Have a nice day.